Chapter 12 Eleanor glanced back at her son as she climbed into her car and took a deep breath. I'm going to show you something first, and then we are going to have a very long, very direct conversation with each other. Do you understand me? Yes, Jack answered, not daring to look his mother in the eyes. He was sitting up weakly, the seatbelt being the only thing that was keeping him upright. His mother was quiet as she drove them down the road. He could practically feel the waves of anger and worry coming off of her, as her mind went through what she knew. He had yet to tell her everything that had happened in detail, and was debating if it would do more harm than good, when she stopped the car and pointed. Past the flashing lights of police cars and fire trucks, were the still smoldering remains of the abandoned school building they had been training in. This is what happens when you act irresponsibly and without control. She took in a deep breath, her entire body shaking with anger, before turning to face him. I had to work with that, that woman to control the damage you two caused. And apparently you risked injury for nothing, since we didn't find any bodies in the area belonging to monsters or otherwise. They were there mom, we're not lying. There were four of them, and one of them was there the night I was injured. Jack's voice was still weak as he spoke, his eyes refusing to leave the building they had inadvertently destroyed. She growled and gave a short nod. That is worrying to hear, far more than you know. She said after a moment, her eyes growing lidded with worry. She sighed and ran a hand over her face before turning the car back towards their house. We'll talk more at home. I want to know exactly what happened today, and what you did to use up so much of your power. Eleanor helped her son into the house, after making sure her daughter Penelope was already asleep in her room. Her husband held the door open for them, his face grim as he took in the condition of his son and the smoky smell that surrounded them both. Wait until we're seated, she ordered her husband before he could open his mouth. Jack held his arm out, using the wall to remain steady, as his mother kept control of his other arm. She steered him into the living room and pushed him onto the couch before seating herself across from him. Jack waited for his father, Jason, to be seated before starting. All right, what do you want to know? His voice was stronger than it had been earlier. He still felt worn out and devoid of energy, but to a lesser degree than even a few minutes before, when he had been in the car. Jason looked worriedly at his wife, clearly waiting for her to answer. Just start at the beginning. You were obviously there for training. Did the attack happen after you were done for the day, or during? Jack settled back into the couch at her words, settling in for what he was sure was going to be a long discussion. One he didn't have the energy to run away from. After, we had just finished our training when they found us. It took Caitlin a little longer today to get rid of the excess energy her body had accumulated, and by the time she had, it was night outside. When we realized that, we rushed to the exit, and that's when we saw the first monster. His eyes glazed over as he went back to the event that had happened hours earlier. For the next few minutes, Jack relayed everything that had happened. What the monsters had said, and more importantly to his mother, what he had done. Eleanor was holding tightly to her husband by the time he had finished speaking. No, this behavior is too far from the norm. Somebody or something must be stirring them up, maybe even guiding them. They rarely attack here, and now all of a sudden they're everywhere and seem to be targeting you specifically. No, something else is going on and I need to find out what. This is my territory, and I need to maintain the balance. Her grip on Jason tightened painfully as she spoke, the ire she was feeling obvious to everyone in the room. Tell me more about what you did to send the energy to Caitlin. She demanded after regaining her control. Jack shrugged, not understanding the significance of what he had managed to do. I mean, I was desperate at the time. All I remember doing is grabbing hold of it and shoving it into her through our connection. That, that right there is the issue. You have only been learning to feel your well for a couple of days, much less being able to touch your magic. People that generate magic like you are supposed to have a hard time touching and controlling their magic. Yet somehow, you, a person with next to no training, were able to touch and control your magic well enough to send it to Caitlin, a girl that apparently you already share a connection of some kind with. She was visibly trying to keep her voice down as she yelled at him. Bonds are not made that quickly. They take time. She twirled and glared at him. And then there is your ability to control your magic. 
if you can control it even once in desperation, then you're already well on your way to being able to use it. Which is another thing that you're not supposed to be able to do without a fully developed bond and years of training. She sank onto the couch next to her husband and panted, I don't understand what is going on anymore. This isn't how things are supposed to work at all. They aren't meant to be this easy for someone. Well, I mean, it was a life or death situation, and I wouldn't say it was easy. Jack countered, trying to be helpful. That doesn't matter. It sets a precedent. If you can do it once, then you can do it again. All you need is the training. She sat up suddenly, her eyes growing hard. Did you have sex with her? That would explain the connection, the bond that is already powerful enough to accept your energy. Everything. What? No. Jack exclaimed, jumping to his feet and then sinking weakly back into the chair as his vision swam. Then I have no idea why your bond with her would be so strong already. If it truly is that strong after only a few days, then the two of you were meant to be bonded. What like soulmates? Jack asked flippantly. Yes, Eleanor answered giving up. He froze and then began to laugh, his wide eyes making the panic he was feeling clear. His mother stood and pulled her husband up as well. I'm not saying you absolutely need to marry the girl, no matter what. What I am saying is that the bond between the two of you makes it clear something is pulling you together. She sighed and rubbed her eyes. I'm tired and am going to sleep. Jack, get some rest and think about what you could have done differently tonight. Jack watched as his mother pulled his father along behind her. His mother's words spiraled through his head as he remained sitting in the chair for a long while afterward. Penelope was standing in the doorway of his room when he woke the next morning. Mom says you are going to be training with us for the next few days and that you are not to go to school today. She gave him a happy smile before scurrying off. He relaxed into the depths of his bed for several more minutes before deciding it was time to fully wake up. He felt better after his shower and was dressed in clean, non-smoke-smelling clothes. His mother was waiting for him at the kitchen table, a mug of steaming tea sitting in front of her. Sit, we need to talk, she ordered him without looking up. I know Penny already told you, but you going to begin training with me today. If I think you can control your powers, then she can be there with us later as well. It's going to take several days for Caitlin to heal properly. When she is well enough, then the two of you will begin training with her mother. As much as it pains me to say anything nice about that woman, she has done a remarkable job training her daughter. Together, the two of them will make sure you have your abilities under control. She pointed to the full plate of bacon and eggs across from her. Eat. You're going to need your energy. I'm going to put you through your paces today and do what I should have done before. I'm going to see what your control is like and how much of your energy is being leaked with every touch. As soon as he was done eating, that was exactly what she did for the rest of the morning. Hour after hour she tested his limits in control, cycling the magic through their bodies in varying amounts and speeds. Jack could feel the magic coursing through his body, the mana channels that they used stretching and straining to contain the increased pressure. His mother kept pushing him until lunchtime had long since passed. We'll stop there for today, she finally said. I can feel the channels in your body beginning to weaken from the pressure I have put them through. Making them go through this kind of exercise now will help them get stronger in the long run. Jack pulled his hands back with a groan, his entire body aching from the exercise. His head hurt from the strain of maintaining a connection to his mana for so long. He hadn't even been trying to manipulate it, merely trying to continually sense its movement. You're making progress, more than I thought you would in fact. His mother leaned back in her chair and massaged her temples. He wasn't sure how to take her words, unsure if she was saying she had originally believed he had no talent or something else. You have to understand just how rare people like you are. She had noticed his reaction to her words and correctly guessed what he was thinking. There are so few of you that most of what the average person knows is little more than hearsay. One thing that has been established, however, is that those who generate magic can't control it. Not without a bond and plenty of practice at least. Yet you can. Granted not well enough to do anything more than control the flow, but even that should be impossible. In time, and with enough practice, you may actually be able to do more than that. I don't care about being able to use magic. 
I just want to be able to control it. I can't be near Penelope right now, and I keep hurting Caitlin. Jack stood and stumbled from the room, every step hurting as his body protested at being forced to move. Control will come in time, besides it depends more on your sister's control than yours in her case. His mother explained behind him. Get some rest, the locatures will be here in a couple of hours for dinner. He stopped in front of his door, as the bottom of his stomach dropped like a rock. Have you talked to them at all today? How is Caitlin doing? I've been with you all day. When would I have had a chance to talk to them? Eleanor asked in exasperation. Now go into your room. Penelope will be home soon, and you aren't ready to be around her yet. Dinner will be pushing it, as it is. Wait, why are all of them coming? I thought you only invited Caitlin. Officially, I did, but I know John won't pass up the opportunity to reconnect and Chantel will want to crash the party simply because that's the kind of person she is. Oh, he had no better response than that. Pushing open the door to his room, he nodded to his mother in acknowledgement and walked inside. His legs were shaking as he made his way over to his bed and collapsed on top of it with a blissful moan. Burying his head into the pillow, he felt his entire body relax slightly and groaned this time in relief and pain. His mother truly had pushed his body to the brink. He had no idea if his control had improved at all, but his channels had certainly grown. Every breath he took caused them to pulsate and twinge in pain as they spasmed. Jack eventually rolled over with a grimace, trying to decide if a hot bath would help at all, before deciding he didn't want to move more than necessary. The painful pulses gradually disappeared around the time he heard his little sister get back from school. There was a soft knock on his door followed by Penny opening it, a moment later, without waiting for him to say anything. She hung back in the doorway and looked at him, sprawled on his bed, covered in a layer of pain-induced sweat. Her hands were clenched as she fought to keep her own powers under control. The small distance between them was still enough to start causing problems she hadn't been prepared for. How was school? He croaked, his mouth was almost painfully dry. Penny's eyes lightened and darkened in turn with each breath, before settling on a molten caramel color that was lighter than normal, but not dangerously so. People were talking about the fire last night constantly. She opened with, Training with mom is harder than you thought it would be, right? She asked while trying to hide her smile. The woman is a demon. He groaned. I knew the way Caitlin and I were training might not have been the most intensive, for me at least, but the difference is just too extreme. Penelope nodded and leaned against the frame, her clenched fist relaxing slightly as she practiced her control. What you are feeling right now is probably similar to what Caitlin was feeling last night after you pushed your magic into her. Mom told you about that? He asked, struggling to sit up in his bed. The flashes of pain were mostly gone, leaving only weariness in their wake. This morning, she swallowed thickly. She also told me about the monsters that apparently exist close to our town. She closed her eyes and let her head thump against the door frame. You need to be careful moving forward. The world is even more dangerous than I thought it was with just humans. Now I have to worry about monsters and people wielding magic. Not to mention when word of you gets out, I'll have to be careful of people that want to use me to get to you. I he stopped. I hadn't even thought of that possibility. Neither had I until mom mentioned it this morning. She said that the bonding between you and Caitlin is almost a guaranteed thing, and that it will close off the most obvious way of getting close to you. Seeing his little sister act like this felt as though something precious was being taken from her. She was still too young to be worried about these things. Yet here she was. It was sad, and it made his heart ache. Jack swung his legs over the side of the bed and patted his mattress before stopping, remembering that she couldn't be that close to him right now. I don't know about it being certain, but that is how they were talking about it last night after we woke up. It really just depends on when they find us though. If they learn of me tomorrow, then we're screwed. If it's a few months from now instead, then we might be fine. Penelope looked at her brother for another few seconds. Dinner isn't for a while yet. You should take a bath before then. Regardless of whether you end up bonded to her, you should still at least appear presentable tonight. She sniffed and waved her hand in front of her nose before turning and skipping off with a giggle. Looking down, he saw his disheveled and salt-lined crusty state at the same time as a rank smell drifted up to his unsuspecting nostrils. 
Pulling back in disgust, he stood and quickly found a change of clothes in his towel. His sister was right. No matter what he decided, he was not going to appear in front of Caitlin and her family smelling like that. A quick but thorough shower later, and Jack was sitting at his desk, dressed in a clean pair of jeans and a blue open button down over a t-shirt, thinking. Deep thoughts unsuited for someone his age flitted through his mind one after another. Shaking his head forcefully, he looked around the room and realized that his backpack was not there. He couldn't remember if it had been lost in the fire or if he had simply left it at Caitlin's house the night before. His phone that was sitting on his computer desk, where he had left it to charge all day, began to vibrate. The screen lit up, and Caitlin's name appeared across the top. Flicking the screen upwards, he accepted the call and brought the phone to his ear, pulling the charger cable free as he did so. Hello? He asked, unsure of why she was calling instead of waiting another hour or two to just talk to him in person. Jack sorry, but apparently we're all coming, and we're about to leave for your house. She opened with, her voice not as vibrant as he was used to. Mom wants to surprise your mother and put her off balance first thing. It's part of whatever petty rivalry that they have going on. Anyway, just make sure your mom knows what to expect, because I have no idea what is going to happen tonight. Alright, thanks for warning me. I'll let her know. How are you feeling? He asked softly, staring out the window next to his bed. I'll tell you when we get there. She replied and promptly hung up. Jack pulled back his arm, tempted to throw the expensive phone against the wall. Taking a deep breath, he relaxed his arm and let the phone drop onto his bed. Mom, he called out loudly. Caitlin just called. They're on their way already and you were right, they're all coming.